What's up guys, Justin here with DCGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that has a ton of different tools for doing everything from modeling to adding HDRI backgrounds, backdrops, everything like that. It does a little bit of everything. It's called RAN Tools. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as someone who's super interested in Blender add-ons and other tools, I usually try to keep an eye on what's popular inside of the Blender market. And um, a week or two ago, this add-on popped up into the uh, popular items so and for a while it was sitting in the top spot and so I really wanted to get into it and check out exactly what it was and what it could do and so ran tools and P cutter is a really interesting add-on because it's kind of a collection of a little bit of everything I was actually kind of shocked to see how many tools are contained inside of this add-on so it is a paid add-on you can check it out in the blender market I'll link to it in the notes down below there's two versions in here there's the essentials and the complete I have no idea why you would go with the essentials when the complete is three dollars more so my recommendation if you are interested in this is to check out the complete version basically it's got this like massive collection of tools inside of it so everything from an hdri library to um it's got different cutting tools that allow you to cut different uh different geometry it's also got asset browser support for a material library cloth simulations um cable simulations just a ton of different stuff kind of contained in here and so i wanted to give you kind of a high level overview of some of the things that are contained inside of this tool set but it really does have rendering tools it's got hard surface modeling tools it's just a lot of stuff in here so let's go ahead and jump over into blender and start taking a look and i will note by the way, that there's detailed documentation as well. So um, it's linked on that page, but there's a change log as well as um, different tutorials and notes for all of the different tools. So you can see camera render, curve material, other things like that. So if you are looking for information on any of these tools, the documentation is a great place to start. And so to enable this add-on, you just install it like you would any other add-on, but you just go into your edit preferences and under ran tools. You want to enable object ran tools and notice how when you do this there's a ton of things you can adjust in here so things like you can adjust the different panels that are going to show up on the right hand side of the page you can set where your asset folders are um, as well as adjusting the ui um, you can also set up different key maps so you can see how a bunch of these are already set up in here so that you can access these simply with your keys so for example the add light setups you would just tap the l key notice how that's going to link you to the add light setups function where you can adjust different lights in here. So we're not going to worry too much about that right now. We'll get more into that in a second, but you can adjust these and kind of customize them to your desires. All right. So first off, you can access the cutters in here, the Boolean cutters by doing a shift Q on your cube on your keyboard. That's going to allow you to access actually several different tools, um, not just the Boolean cutters. In this case though, notice how there's an option over here for draw. And so when you go into the draw function, what that's going to do is that's going to let you draw a shape. And then you can move your mouse to adjust it so that it cuts inside of an object like this. So you can use this to quickly add those Boolean cutters by doing that. So you can use the draw function. Notice how there's different, uh, different uh, shapes that you can draw. So if I tap B, for example, notice how I can draw on this face. And then I can use this to cut in here like this. And so there's other things you can do too, like adding bevels and other things like that. You can do that by tapping the B key or you can tap the V key in order to do a vertex bevel. So um, it's just gonna give you access to a lot of different things that you can use in order to adjust um, the cutters that you're using. So another great example is if we were to go top down like this, do a shift Q, whoops, do a shift Q. And then let's say we wanted to draw a circle like this. So I'm just gonna draw this in here, but notice how there's an option for R where you can set this to be a radial array. And then you can scroll your mouse up and down and move this in order to add a radial array in a circle right here. Notice when these overlap, you get a bunch of Z fighting in here. So you don't necessarily want these touching, but you can use this in order to quickly adjust that. And then you can also move your mouse like this um, in order to cut them in and out and other things like that. So notice how you can tap the other keys in here to do other things like wireframe, but it's really easy to use to add these Boolean cutters. And so notice that you can also adjust these cutters by doing a shift Q and then going down into your cutters list right here. Notice how this is gonna give you a list of your different cutters and then you can adjust them 
right? So you can adjust this with the S key, so it's a slice, a C key where it's an inset, a D with the difference, but you can also adjust things like the thickness by tapping the T key. Um, so just a bunch of different stuff. And the cool thing about this is these are, these are not permanent. Uh, these are done using modifiers. So what that means is that means that you can come back in here and make those changes. So there's also a grid function. So if I do a shift Q, draw, then I mouse over a surface like this. Notice how I can tap the control key in order to add a grid. Well, the cool thing about the grid is now if you were to draw on top of this, so if I was to do like an A, or we're gonna do an X actually, and hold the control key, notice how my mouse will snap to the different points on this grid. So you can use this to draw on a grid with at least some level of accuracy with these different points like this. So now if I was to hit the enter key, but now I can tap the G key and adjust the line thickness in here. And so we could use this to add like a polygon inset. I could tap the T key to adjust the thickness, other things like that. So it gives you a lot of control over what you're able to create. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the light tools that contain in here. So if I have an object selected like my Bonnie model and I tap the L key, notice what that's going to do is that's going to add a light setup. And then you can kind of scroll your mouse in order to see the different light setups. And so we'll switch over to Eevee, but notice how when I, uh, notice how I can scroll my mouse to get these different light setups like this. So I can use this to quickly add lights to objects in my model. So I can also tap the A key to adjust the alignment. I can hold the control key in order to adjust the light intensity like this. I can also tap the T key in order to set these to trap tracked in an object. But if I click and then move my mouse, notice how I can also adjust the intensity of those lights before clicking to place them like this. So another cool function of that is there's also an option if you tap the U key to quickly add a backdrop. Then you can scroll through this and this is gonna give you different backdrops based on the object that you're working with. So this is a fast way to add um, a bunch of different kinds of backdrops to your models without you having to do a whole lot of work in order to do that. So you can also adjust the bevel once this is placed. You can scroll your mouse to set more or less bevel segments um, and you can adjust things like your color like your hue, your saturation, other things like that, just by moving your mouse. So it's a really interesting way to set up render setups inside of Blender. So it also gives you access to the ambient CG material library. So basically the way that that works is say you've got an object like this one, I'm just gonna do a shift Q again. And so we're just gonna jump in here. We're actually gonna click on the library function right here, but notice how it's gonna give you access to the ambient CG material library. And so you can do a search. So you can look for like metal right here, click on search. And now if we click on this, you can see the different metal types that are contained inside that library. So let's say we were to select, uh, this metal plates is interesting to me, so let's go ahead and select that. But you can click on any of the uh, resolution options. In this case, for example, I'm just gonna go with a 1K due to my internet speed, but we're gonna select that. And notice it's gonna download this and it's gonna apply it to my object. And so if I wanna adjust the way that looks, I can just do a shift Q, click on adjust, and so then you can make adjustments to those things just by doing a shift Q and adjusting that. And so inside of your model, you can also hold the shift J keys. And when you do a shift J, you can select different materials from the dropdown to apply to this model. So if I do a shift J, notice how I can pick from any material that's in my model and adjust it. And so there's a bunch of other material functions contained inside of this add-on, which I'm not really gonna get into, but you can check them out. And so there's also a number of different node tools in here that allow you to like mix different materials together, other things like that. I'm not gonna get too far into that right now, just know that they are contained inside of this add-on. Um, like I said, this add-on does seem to contain a little bit of everything. And so there's also a pretty great cable function in here. So I kind of like the way that it does the simulations. So if we do a shift Q again, go up to cables, and we wanna click on create right here. What this is gonna do is it's gonna let us click on a surface and select a couple different points. And then you can adjust things like your tension by tapping the T key, um, by moving this around. And if you lose that, you can just go back in here and select to edit. So I'm gonna adjust my tension out some more. You can tap the E key to adjust the extrusion in here, other things like that. But one of the things I really like about this is if you go to a shift Q and click on simulate, what that's gonna do is that's gonna actually come in here and that's gonna simulate um, your cable and the way that should work. So if I tap the D key, notice how I can adjust the stretch 
in here. So the longer the stretch, the longer the cable is going to go, right? But when you're done, you can just hit the enter key or actually you have to click. But now your cable is actually going to kind of like hang down inside of your model. So you can use this to simulate those really quickly. So you can also do multiple wires. So with the selected, right, notice how I can adjust the number of wires that are in here. I can adjust the radius of the strands. I can adjust the twist by tapping the V key. So you can see those twisting over here, as well as the different wire types. So you can tap the F key and set if it's parallel or radial. So you can also add like caps to your wires. So if I do a shift Q, let's say we created a cable right here, adjust our tension out a little bit, but let's say we're going to do a shift Q, edit it, and activate the cap picker right here. You can use this in order to place caps on the ends of your cables. So you can model cap objects, and then it'll place it on the ends of your cables, just like this. So one I haven't quite figured out yet, but it's in here, is you can use an object to create like a cable covering in here as well. So then finally, you also can quickly set up HDRIs from Polyhaven just by doing a shift in, or maybe it's an alt in, it's an alt in. And you can click in here and you can select the different, uh, the different types, or you can do a search, but it's gonna give you a list of the HDRIs that are in here. So for example, let's say I wanted to add this photo studio right here. Well, I could bring that HDRI in um, just by clicking on the button right here. And it's gonna go ahead and let you adjust different things about this. But then when you're done, you can click on okay. It'll actually set up the HDRI for you. So now if I was to jump into my rendered mode like this, notice how that HDRI is set up and lighting my model right here. All right, so as I got further into this tool, I was shocked by the number of functions that are contained inside of it. It's really got a little bit of everything. So I'm really impressed by the feature set of this add-on, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this tool? Is it something you'd be interested in? I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to that on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.